Good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to be able to be with you over our, in our Facebook Live Eucharist today <clears throat> as we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension. As you know, the Feast of the Ascension was actually on Thursday, um, but in Clandon we, <coughs> we celebrate it a couple of days later on Sunday, um, in addition to the Thursday um, when everyone, where the majority of people are going to be with us to worship Jesus Christ, the Ascended Lord. The Eucharist this morning is being offered for the repose of the soul of Elvina Yates, a very close friend of Rosie Wood who died recently. And so we remember Elvina in our prayers as we come to celebrate this Eucharist to offer to God the sacrifice which takes away the sins of the world. <clears throat> and as we gather to worship Almighty God, we sing to his praise our first hymn, the head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the powers of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into the heavens to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule. Let us hear the story, let us join as we remember the story of his parting. First, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon and forgiveness. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Seeing as we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ the Son of God, let us offer him praise, worthy his name. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may there also ascend, and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now our first scripture reading, which is read for us by Sue. The reading is taken from Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach, until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, 
It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. Remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing, blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just before I was ordained deacon, almost ten years ago now, in fact it will be my tenth year, my tenth anniversary of ordination this summer, I went with the other candidates for ordination on a three-day retreat. If any of you um, go on to be ordained in the Church of England, you will be expected to go on a retreat immediately before your ordination, a time for peace and quiet, a time for a break from the very serious preparation which you've been doing through academic study and through pastoral studies, a time in which you can pray, in which you can um, think deep thoughts about your impending ordination and the responsibilities which you're going to be taking on. I have to say that my diaconal uh, retreat. I shouldn't really be saying this in a live broad broadcast, I'm sure, but my diaconal retreat in the Diocese of Guildford didn't quite live up to expectations. When you hear the word retreat and you think about what the ideal retreat might look like, you might think of a monastery in the countryside. We went to the Diocese of Guildford Retreat House in Woking, you might imagine yourself going on long, beautiful spiritual walks in the countryside. If you wanted to, you could go for a walk 
around Hobbycraft or even Asta. When I think of a retreat, I tend to think of long periods of silence and prayer. But I was on retreat during Wimbledon week, and, the, and other members of my retreat group found the television room, and it really didn't feel the best of preparations for ordained life. Whenever we face a big challenge, we all tend to want, I think, to draw back, to take stock, to recharge our batteries, and to prepare ourselves for what lies ahead. Jesus, in our Gospel reading, was about to leave his disciples and had given them a really daunting task, taking the good news about Jesus Christ to the whole world. Now, conventional wisdom would say that he should have urged them to go on retreat, to find a quiet place to pray, perhaps to go back to Galilee for a bit. If you'd been a diocesan director of ordinance, you probably would have said something like this. Repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to all the nations. So go off to the countryside, spend some time praying and relaxing, have some time in silence, waiting for God to guide you, listening to God, because it's going to be hard work and you're going to need all the strength that you can muster. But that isn't what Jesus Christ says to his disciples. Stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Stay in the city. The same place where 40 days earlier Jesus had been arrested and tortured and executed. Stay in the city. The same place that was so dangerous for the disciples after the, uh, at, his, at Christ's arrest that they fled and hid for their lives stay in the city. The same place which was so threatening after the resurrection of Jesus Christ that they hid themselves behind locked doors in a room together. Stay in the city. Stay there, Jesus says, in that place of weakness and vulnerability and wait for God's power. In the reading from Luke's Gospel, the city is the place where the church is weak, powerless, and threatened. Here, the powerless church waits to receive from Jesus Christ what she cannot produce for herself, the desire and strength to take the good news of Christ into the world. We live in a self-help culture. There isn't a problem that we have as human beings where there isn't a YouTube video offering advice on how we can improve things. You can go to Waterstones, well, at least when you can actually go to Waterstones, I don't know whether it's open at the moment, but when you can go to Waterstones, the shelves are packed with books offering advice on every conceivable area in which we might want to improve our lives. I remember back in the 90s, working for somebody who would listen to tapes. It was the 90s, we didn't have MP3s then. So he'd listen to tapes of a motivational speaker called Tony Robbins. You may remember Tony Robbins. He's a large, energetic, assertive American. And Tony Robbins, I remember, would exhort this, uh, this man and the other devotees to do things like looking at themselves in the mirror first thing in the morning and roaring like a lion or something like that. Because there's nothing that we can't do, right? Right? There's nothing that is beyond our capabilities. If someone is weak, they need to become strong, and they can do it. If someone is unemployed, they need to get a job, and if only they put their mind to it, they can do it. I think, though, that the current lockdown has perhaps exposed in all of us the sense that actually there's rather a lot that is beyond our control. That leaves us feeling frightened. That leaves us feeling vulnerable and weak. But as Jesus prepares his disciples for his absence, he wants them to know that they aren't powerful, that they aren't in control, that they aren't strong. And so he tells them to stay in the place where their weakness is palpable and there to wait for God to strengthen them. 
Perhaps then it's as we acknowledge our weakness that we begin to truly understand that God embraces us not because we're strong or lovely or desirable, but simply because God loves that which he has made. He embraces us and loves us and forgives us and heals us in our weakness, in our human fragility. As we celebrate Christ's ascension today, we place our hopes, our faith, our love in one who knows human weakness and who now sits at the right hand of the Father in the highest heaven. We place our hope in one who still carries the scars of his human weakness in his glorified body. We pray for him to strengthen us with his spirit, that we might know ourselves loved by God and secure in that love, and in that love to have the strength to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. Let us declare our faith in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now pray together and our prayers of intercession today are led for us by Ingrid. Risen, ascended, glorified Lord, we kneel before you in humble adoration and awe. Rule in our hearts and be at the centre of your church. We hold before you our archbishops, bishops, archdeacons and clergy. In particular, Barnaby and those working with him in these parishes. Draw near to them as they seek you and shower them with blessings. Fulfill in your church your work of redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Exalted Lord, at your ascension, your disciples still didn't understand the nature of your kingdom. Expand the vision of all in leadership and government to be subject to your just and gentle rule. And we pray for the World Health Organization, national governments and local leaders too, heads of schools, hospitals and other institutions Grant them wisdom, faith, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Lord of hope and consolation, look with compassion on the anguish of our troubled world. Be our strength and comfort in times of adversity. We pray for everyone affected by Cyclone Amphan and for those who have been evacuated. For the migrants trying to cross the English Channel and for the rescue teams ensuring their ultimate safety. For children and young people who feel they have no future. For those who feel they have no value. For our families, for our friends and communities. We pray for those caring for others. For those who are sick, that they will have access to care and treatment. We pray for those in isolation who are cut off from their normal routines and support. We name before you those known to us who are vulnerable, sick and scared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Lord of comfort and counsel, we pray for those who are grieving. May they find your fellowship in their suffering, your comfort in their loss, and your hope in their despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humility. Now then I need to wash my hands. Blessed are you Lord God of all creation through your goodness we have this wine to set before you fruit of the vine and the work of human hands it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever.
So we hold in our hearts Elvina Yates as we celebrate the Holy Eucharist together. Lord God, receive our offering as we celebrate the ascension of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. By his gifts to us, may we rise with him to heaven, where he lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Born of a woman, he came to the rescue of our human race. Dying for us, he trampled death and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to life eternal, and by his ascension gave us the sure hope that where he is we may also be. Therefore the universe resounds with Easter joy, and with choirs of angels we sing forever to your praise. Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his commandment, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes 
and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St Thomas of Canterbury, St Peter, St Paul, the Apostles and all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation and at our Saviour's command, with boldness we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Jesus Christ is present with us wherever we are. He has ascended beyond the heavens to be seated at the right hand of the Father. He is with us here in the sacrament of the altar. He is with you at home by his grace in your hearts. As we receive communion here in church, please take a moment to make your spiritual communion at home. Some music will play. The Clandons Choir has recorded some music. And you might use the prayer in your order of service for making your spiritual communion. God is gone up with a Mary. He's 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 gone up with a God is the Lord with the Son of the 
Let us pray. God our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that, nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this Ascension Sunday. Thank you for um, trying things, new things with music. And a huge thank you to the Clandons Choir again for recording at a social distance across the internet such a beautiful um, communion motet for us. Uh, that will be appearing on YouTube later on. Um, but for now, we're going to conclude our service um, before our final blessing with our hymn, Hail the day that sees him rise. Alleluia.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, pleads for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. up.